Hello, hello, hello. Welcome guys, welcome back channel. Hope you have an amazing day. First up, I just wanna say thank you for all the comments I've been receiving on my videos. Uh, it's been super cool uh, to see people responding to the content I've been putting out. Uh, for sure, the concept is still super weird to me that when you sit in front of a camera by yourself in your bedroom and put it out online that real people actually uh, receive and respond back to you. Uh, so that's just the coolest thing ever, especially during COVID and all. Um, but we are here because this is another tutorial video. Uh, today I want to focus on absolute beginners. So you just, you just downloaded Logic, you just downloaded Ableton. Uh, I'll be doing this tutorial in Ableton. Uh, but that said, the concept should work for everyone. Uh, I just want to go over like the things that confuse most people when you get started uh, with music production. I have a friend who just started producing and he's going through all this like craziness and he's like, like all the things that seem basic to people that uh, have been doing it for a while are confusing. So I just want to make this video to clarify everything and Make it really simple so you can get to making music right away. So the first thing you need to know when you get into music making is that, uh, you know, songs are made in layers. Basically, uh, take your Coldplay song or whatever, your soft rock song. You usually have two different recorded guitars and we call those tracks. So uh, two different tracks of guitar and then you might have a track of bass, recorded bass, and then you might have recorded keys or piano or something, and then a recorded vocal, and then a few tracks uh, designated to your recorded drum. It works the exact same way on your desktop, on your computer. The only difference is that uh, we just categorize things in MIDI uh, tracks and audio tracks. So audio tracks are for audio samples that you drag in or anything you record into your software. And then MIDI tracks are for software instruments and anything that you really play into your, uh, your software using like a MIDI controller uh, or keyboard or something like that, or just using your computer keyboard. So unless you have a full drum kit that you can, and mics, that not to mention mics, that you can record a drum kit into your software, um, most people are gonna wanna program drums in their software. And how the hell do you do that, you may be asking. Well, you use recorded samples of uh, different parts of the drum kit. So you might use a kick sample and a snare sample and a hi-hats, and then you might use a loop of some percussion or something to layer with that. And then you kind of put it all together in layers in your software, and then you got your program drums. Now, the next question is where do I get those samples? And every DAW comes with stock uh, drum samples, so definitely go look for those. Um, but then the next option is to go online. So I use Splice because it's probably the biggest uh, platform that has tons and tons and tons of sample packs of not just drum samples, of Foley samples, of just weird sounds, anything guitar samples, loops, anything you need uh, for your building blocks to make music, you can get on Splice. Uh, the issue with Splice is that it's $11.99 in Canada a month, which is not super cheap, but uh, I think it's worth it uh, if you're making a lot of music and it's just convenient. Uh, now, other places you can get, uh, this is not a sponsor video because I don't have any sponsors, by the way, but <laughs> uh, the other option is to go to places like Reddit um, and then there's a bunch of other websites. Cymatics uh, is a company that has a lot of free samples that are really great. Um, but basically you can scour the internet to find different drum samples. And really that's part of producing. Uh, people think producers just spend all their time making sick beats, but you know, half the time they're just like clicking through drum samples on their computer, trying to find like that perfect snare. The only issue with Splice is that the, a lot of the samples are used a lot and 
Um, you know, it's like any other kind of social media. The website shows you what's featured at the moment and what's kind of popular. And sometimes as a producer, you don't always want to be using uh, audio samples that are popular because you don't want your stuff to sound like everyone else. You want to be original, right? So you have to dig a bit on Splice to find good samples. The next thing you need to get to figure out and to just memorize is what are the names of the different parts of the drum kit? That way you can search up what you're actually looking for when you're trying to make something. The main types of drum samples are kicks, uh, claps, or snares. Uh, they're both kind of synonymous. And then in terms of their role in the beat, and then hi-hats, open hats, and uh, maybe percussion. So that's like a snare roll. Um, so there's all kinds of things that you'll just learn the terms that you need to search what you're looking for. And then you just download the audio sample by clicking the down arrow here. And then you get this cute little app here that uh, Splice has going where you just can basically search whatever you're looking for. The other option is to download them on your hard drive. And then in this nice little Ableton uh, folder section, you can go through all your samples. Okay, the next question is how do you actually program your drums? Well, uh, there's two ways, basically. One way is to use MIDI of some in some way. And then the other way is to just use the audio samples and patch them together. The way I do it is by just dragging in audio. Um, I actually got into that by watching Ramzoid videos. If you don't know him, you definitely know him. He's like one of the biggest YouTubers in this niche and uh, he's super cool. I love that guy, but he inspired me to start. Okay, so there's a good sounding kick that I like. It's got a lot of oomph to it. And as you can see, I literally just dragged it in and just plopped it in on an audio track. Now you'll notice you can't drag these into a MIDI track because it's not MIDI, it's audio. Um, and then all you do is you, you know, you just copy paste that audio sample on the grid to where you want it. It's pretty simple. So in Ableton, I just hold down control and I click on the sample and then I drag it to wherever I want and then I let it go and that way uh, I'm just copying and pasting. Then I can make a little cool little pattern here. Now I got my clap, drag it in, uh, and then select the whole thing, and then go Control D for Control Duplicate, and then like bada bing bada boom, pretty quick. And you just get to know over time kind of where things need to be on the grid. What I really like about this way of programming drums is you can really quickly transpose different samples. And I think that's a huge thing you guys need to get into doing if you're new to production is right away when you're programming drums, you should always be pitching them up and down. Uh, this, this, this is what transposing means. Uh, just to make sure that they sound right and fit with the rest of your tune, whatever you're making. So I have this group. So this hi-hat, open hat, it's, it's kind of loud and it's kind of long. So I can just pitch it up here by selecting all four of them. Boom, it sounds way better. And then I can select it again, click Command J and turn that to audio and then duplicate that. Now the other way to uh, do drums is through MIDI. So uh, what you do is you get a sampler, uh, which is basically this plugin. If you don't know what plugins are, they're just software instruments basically, or effects. And you, uh, you drag your drum samples out of your splice plugin, your splice software little window into the sampler. This is gonna automatically go to a MIDI track. You cannot do this in an audio track. And it says drop sample here, pretty self-explanatory. And then you can, uh, by selecting the little keyboard sign up on the top right corner here, 
basically puts the audio sample on a keyboard for you so you can play it in like a, with a MIDI keyboard or with your computer keyboard. And then you would just uh, hit record, hit spacebar to start recording. And then you would go into this MIDI clip. Now it's in like MIDI information. And you just, uh, I mean, you can click Command A so that they're all selected and then right click and then hit quantize. And then I maybe drag them over. Now, if you're gonna do it MIDI though, uh, the easiest way, this is sort of the general principle of it can work in any DAW, but in Ableton, the easiest way to work uh, programming drums with MIDI is to use the drum rack. So the drum rack is basically an, a more elaborate sampler that allows you to have multiple drum samples in it. So you can kind of do all your drums all at the same time and play them in. The thing with working in audio tracks is you can't play it in. You have to drag it in and kind of copy and paste. It's the very, it's the computer nerd way of doing it. But to do it with a drum rack, you just need a MIDI track and then you go uh, select the drum rack here. And then you have all these like pads that are different notes on your keyboard or drum pad, MIDI machine, whatever you got. And it just emulates like an old MPC machine, uh, drum machine that you might have seen like Timbaland using or something. Uh, and I do the same thing. So I'll just drag in a kick. You can do all the same stuff with MIDI. You can still transpose it. You can see when I click on the sample here, it shows the sample. You can do all kinds of cool things by shortening the which part of the sample uh, is triggered. So I'm clicking on my keyboard and I have the little keyboard thing selected um, for my computer keyboard to be my MIDI controller but it's not, uh, it's not playing the drum samples. So what you gotta realize is that this works in octaves. And if you don't know what octaves are, it's basically just different sections of a piano keyboard. You have low, mid, high, extra high kind of thing. Uh, sections of 12 notes or 12 semitones. But basically you, what you need to do sometimes is you need to shift your little computer keyboard up or down an octave so that you can actually trigger the samples because these, I place them on a certain octave, so you need to be in that octave to be able to actually play them. So to do that, uh, you go Z to down an octave and it's Y or X to go up an octave. So go Z, there's my kick. So then you can just play in a beat. And then you go in and then you can select, uh, you know, again, Command A, select them, quantize them to whatever grid you're on. Uh, so that brings me to the next thing is uh, when you quantize stuff, in Ableton, it quantizes to the grid setting that you are currently on. So most people have like the adaptive grid turned on. I don't know if you can actually turn it off. When it's zoomed out like this, in between each grid line is a whole bar. So four beats. And then when I zoom in, you know, we have, we can see all four beats. And then I zoom in even more, it goes down to a 16th. It goes down to a 132nd. You just need to know that because when you quantize things, if you quantize it to the zoomed out grid, it might sound bad because it's gonna quantize it to the closest line, which is quite a ways, uh, you know, sometimes. Versus if you zoom in a bit and then quantize it there, it might be quantizing it to the closest eighth note or something versus quantizing it to the closest quarter note. That's it for the video, guys. I hope that clarifies everything, um, but it might not. So comment below anything you're confused about and I will make a video on it. Um, yeah, please like, subscribe, comment, all that good stuff, and I will see you all in a future video. Bye for now.